Okay. There's a gang all here. Gang's all here. Gang's all here. It's probably seven by Fred's watch. Yeah. Seven. All right. Let's begin. Uh, sign. Uh, approved. Approved. June 27th, July 13th. Okay, I move that we approve that. Second. In favor? Aye. Okay. Uh, scheduled appointments, seven. Full bloom public hearing. Okay. Right here. Yeah. Full bloom? Yes. I'll just, uh, let me just add, I'll just read the, the public hearing notice if you don't mind. No, I don't mind. Select Board of the Town of Waitley will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, August 16th, 2016 at 7 p.m. at the Waitley Town Offices, 4 Sandy Lane. Old Moon Market Garden LLC, 216 Long Plain Road, Waitley Mass has applied for an amended license to install 12 1,000 gallon propane tanks at 216 State Road, Waitley Mass. Application for the license is to be considered under the provision of Mass General Law, Chapter 148. So, so duly noted. Right. And okay. we'll open the hearing. Okay, let's open the hearing. Anybody have any comments, questions? I think, yeah, Mike probably has a, a quick presentation. Oh, okay, fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, quick explanation. Just, for the record, you, you are? Oh, I'm Mike George from George Propane. And you are? Dwight Thompson. Okay, thank you. Would you like me to So you're the George of George Propane? I'm one of them. There's more than one. Is that a coincidence or is that intended? It was <laughs> genetic. It was. Okay, so just, they didn't happen to hire a guy named George. George. No. Okay. That's a good strategy. Name all your kids the same name. George, George. George. Yeah. Is your dad George Foreman? What's that? Your dad is George Foreman? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. I agree. Go ahead, George. Okay. No, so, um, this is, uh, well, let me just, we're applying for a, uh, a license, or DeWitt's applying for a license to increase the storage from four 1,000 gallon tanks up to 12 1,000 gallon tanks. There's four 1,000 gallon tanks there now. Um, this is where the, I don't know, if, here's Christian Lane, 91. Um, and this is where the existing storage is now, four 1,000 gallon tanks. This is the existing greenhouse. This is also greenhouse now, right? Yeah. And this is the addition that DeWitt's putting on. And we're proposing Mm -hmm. Move the tanks from here to here, this location. Increase them. We're gonna. We would like to go from four to eight, but have a license for twelve, so that if do it um, expands again, we will have a, a sizable, you know, enough storage license so we can put the extra four in. Um, Are those currently under or above ground? Above ground. They're above. And the new ones will be above as well. Yep. What else is going on? Is there solar panels? Solar, <coughs> solar all back here? Do yeah, the solar's here? back there. Yeah, you guys had a yeah. hearing about that uh, yeah. a year ago. More. Yeah. And so you guys aren't involved? That's not you guys? Yeah, that is. That is so. <coughs> yeah. So is access to the tanks is going to be off Christian Lane or off State Road? Mm -hmm. uh, State Road. So that nothing changes on that. Well, no, the other ones were Christian. Is it is it Christian Lane? The no, the access now is off State Road. Yeah, I thought so. Right here. Well, I'm okay. That was it. Okay. Like, was it either or? We get it for both. Well, outside. yes, yes, you can get it both. We filled them off of um, State Road. Okay. But there's access. Um, is there access right here? There. Right. 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 So, John, you guys would have access from both. Right across the street. There's, there's no, is there a requirement for uh, distance to neighboring structures or residents? Or 25 feet. Oh, wow. That's all, even for these. The filling station has to be 25 feet. That's the best I can. That's the only thing I can find. Am I right, Mike? Yes. Has there been any thought to, I and mean, I guess it's expense to putting them underground? Um, no. Just because, because why? Right, because why it, and right, we wouldn't put them underground unless um, it was a visual, you know, issue, or um, if, say, you didn't have, um, if there was a, a higher, uh, a higher risk, I guess, from surrounding, uh, say, structures or activities, mm -hmm. um, then that's one of the options that a fire chief can say. Look, like, I've known that in larger tanks in a city, sometimes they've mounted them but it's pretty rare. Usually if there's a lack of water supply on a very large tank. On a very large tank. Like a 60,000 or an 80,000 gallon tank, 
and there's a lack of water supply or they can't get enough water there, then they'll mount. Are you eventually going to go with uh, natural gas? I think you'd love to, Fred. Yeah. So is this only a temporary? Not, yeah, sure. Or can be temporary. Hopefully not in our eyes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we don't know. Yeah. yeah. We yeah. have no idea. We have natural on the property, but we have a moratorium. But we don't have availability of yeah, right. Okay. So it's not a temporary installation by any means. It's a That's all above ground, so you could remove it any time. Yeah. Right. yeah. But it's you know, Dan, you had a comment? Uh, just, I didn't know if full boom had it in the heart to maybe put a fence around this so we don't have to look at 12 tanks. Right now, it's all visible from the road. Okay. There's going to be a barrier around it. Will it cover the tanks? Uh, we were just going to put jersey barriers around it. Yeah, I was just trying to show the aesthetics. And yeah. It's like we're growing. Pro are are tanks you uh, across the street? No. Okay. But I, I mean, I, I, you could make a strong argument that that one of the one of the the assets of Whitley is its rural character. Yeah. And I'm not opposed to this, so I'm not saying, but but just from a sheer good neighbor, you know, I remember when, when Deerfield, when Deerfield, when um, Yankee Candle put up the, the wax tanks, we had them at least make an attempt and <coughs> plant those blue spruce in front of them. Um, They're a little taller than the blue spruce. I, I get that, but we made an effort. <laughs> you should have saved some of the Christmas trees you had to go yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, so I, I, think it's, I don't think it's a bad idea. It's certainly cheaper than submerging them. Um, but then what? Just then putting them underground. I think so, the visual all you see is two. You should see two because they're stacked this way. So what? And you can't see it from Christian. Right. They'd be right. You'd see they're stacked. They'd be two, two four, three. six, eight, like that. So yeah. I guess you could see it if you're looking from this side yeah. or from this side. So you're going to double the greenhouse capacity, roughly. Yeah. And what do you produce? We produce herbs, mostly in the greenhouse, mostly herbs. And, and plants for our field production. So that's rural. I mean, you know, it's agriculture. Yeah, no, I just, I, I just, you know. Yeah. The other, the other so option for, you for screening would be the fence, uh, fence with the, uh, with the slats or whatever it is so around it, so you don't see the tanks. You see the fence, something. Yeah. Well, I assume. The abutters have spoken if they're going to speak about this proposal, or they're here. Yeah, uh, Arbor Bites. Yeah, uh, listen, I'm not opposed to agriculture at all. It's just yeah. we're going to have 12 tanks, and, and uh, you're going to expand, and that's great. We're probably going to have 20 tanks. Like I say, it's going to look like a propane farm instead of a but a few arbor bites and everything would uh, visual barrier is what they call. It. Yeah, it just doesn't cost much, and it looks nice. Yeah, why, why we, we could we could definitely not, do that. And not the other side where you wouldn't see it from anywhere. Well, it would probably just yeah maybe we just do it on say like uh, one full side on five and ten and half of the other so there's easy truck set truck access right. and not on the side closest to the greenhouse. So my my concern would be not about the tank so much but about you're going to double the greenhouse capacity, right? It's already done. It's yeah. done. No, it's it's a, oh, so you're not going to add any more greenhouse. So the light pollution at night is going to be as bad. It's yeah. not changing. It's not There's changing. no change in the lights. I mean, you can see that purple glow, but I don't find it. It's purple, right? Yeah, it's a purple glow. I mean, it's... And I don't find it offensive. I just, you know... Right next to it. I'm... I don't have any other... I have... I don't care. I, that's fine. Yeah. I, mean, I encourage you to think about that, but that's, up, that's, up, that's your call. Okay, Brian, I like that with you. Now, why, why not put them on the other side of the greenhouse? If you look here, so you wouldn't see them from anywhere? That's where they were installed in the original greenhouses. That's where the plumbing is for the greenhouses. Am I right, Mike? Yeah, all the plumbing's on that side. And they access. put it there for expansion for ease of access, I'm guessing. Yeah. Okay. Any other comments? All right, so are you making the screening a requirement or? No. Okay. Not, that's, that's me. No? Okay. Just the 
friendly suggestion. One of the well, one of the things that, um, that the fire chief had recommended be included as a condition of, of the license would be that there's crash protection installed around the tanks. That's a Jersey barrier. Yes. Sure. So there's a spot on the license where there's conditions or okay. requirements that yep. can be added when we write up the license. All right. So okay. that that would be a, if that if you wanted that to be a specific condition that would well, should be part of the motion. So can I go back to the aesthetics for a second? Won't we, instead of seeing propane tanks, see Jersey barriers? I understand that, but you still see them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, I don't want to make it a requirement, but I would double down on my friendly encouragement to have a fence. Because, again, I think, I think a lot of people would say, yeah, propane tanks are part of doing business. Jersey barriers are, some, are a structure that people see on the highway during construction season. It's just sort of speaking on behalf of people who haven't commented about this, obviously, but it's just something to think about, but at least at least a lot where it's real visible to put a fence up so that it preserves the rural character of the town as opposed to looking at Jersey barriers. Yeah, we're 450 feet from 5 and 10. I, I get it. I, I get it. That's why I'm just making a friendly... Yeah, I, 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 I hear you. Okay. Isn't there going to be fence around the, the tanks anyway? No, no it's the barriers. It's just, it's just the barriers. Just the barriers. Yeah. I like the Arbor Vitae idea. That's just we'll, we'll pursue the Arbor yeah. Vitae around the outside of the Jersey barrier. Sure, that sounds great. Sort of like Wrigley Field. All right. Thanks and thanks for your yeah. Produce. We'll do that. That's and sunflowers. And thanks for the uh, won't be there in the, the renewable way. energy as much as you do. All right. So all right. Because this is a grant of a license, can we just have a formal motion? I move that we approve the license. See, Brian brings formalities. Are there right? additional restrictions exactly. that we're including? Not that we didn't already mention. Right. Just the jersey, just the crash protection recommended by the fire chief. Right. Yeah. Okay. And and, and but make it make a note that he that they they've offered to to grow the arbor vitae of uh, arbor vitae plant. Okay. I opened my mouth. <laughs> Good job. All right. Thank you. I Thank think, you. I think that's all there is to it. All right. Great. You have all right. Glad you're expanding. That's yeah. fine. Thank you. Read nothing. Okay. Three nothing. All right. I'll take that up. Thank you. My office is pretty bad. No, that's right. We're actually okay. ahead of time, <laughs> but I think we can continue moving. Al? Yeah, yeah. A complaint. My complaint is uh, what can be done when a, uh, about a neighbor who doesn't maintain his tree line? In what way? Well, <clears throat> years ago, a neighbor. He planted some uh, pine trees, and they're quite high, yeah. and they're messing up my irrigation system where they're pinching off the lines. The roots are. Yeah. The pine needles are falling all over the lawn and causing moss. Uh, I lost uh, a lilac tree and some other trees because the, these things are so high. You know, and I asked them to, several times to cut these trees back because they're hanging about 10, 20 feet over the, over the line. And he says, well, if you want them done, do them yourself. So is your neighbor here? No. He didn't do nothing. He's not here. Can, I, can I ask where you live? What? Can I ask where you live? Where I live? Yeah. 172 Long Plain Road. Where is that on Long Plain? I apologize for that. When you take a take a, a right off of Christian Lane, yeah. you go down a, a quarter of a mile, and I live on the left hand side, <coughs> past um, um, what's uh, past Dave's farm. Who? Past Dave Jackson's farm. No, 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 no. not that far. Right after the yellow house. Oh, okay, okay. Warner, Warner, so. Okay. Westover. Right after the yellow house. So who's your neighbor there? Who's the neighbor? Peter Westover. No. Really? I, I don't have an answer in terms of what <clears throat> we can do. Legally. Legally. And I can talk to you, he's a friend of mine. I didn't know this was an issue. I'd be happy to talk to him for you. Well, I mean, he hasn't done nothing in 20 something years. Did he plan since you were there or you moved there 
after the trees were We there? moved there within six months of each other. He was there, and then six months later, I moved in. We built a house. And then he planted the trees? After. Okay. I, it, seemed, it seemed like when I put my driveway in, I have a night light that comes on at dusk and goes off in the morning. And his wife bothered her. She couldn't sleep at night because of that light. Of course, they're no longer married. So the irrigation system that you're talking about. Yeah, what, what about it? Well, I'm wondering, is it, is it, is it just a, a, to water your lawn or? Yeah. Okay. And it's underground, obviously. Correct. And the? The root system's pinching the, the they're only plastic hoses. Yeah, how long has that been happening for? For about two or three years. Two, three years. As the trees get bigger, even when I go by there, I put a $7,000 fence in just to hide it, hide his place. But it's a mess. He's got rubbish all over the yard and everything else. The $7,000 fence was because I have company and his dogs sit there and they bark. And they can see people there. Okay. Recently, I called the police because there was part of a carcass that he buried out in his backyard that the coyotes dug up and brought him over to my yard. Nat took the cake. I assume you're saying the dog buried the carcass. The what? The no. beat buried the carcass? I don't know who buried it, but there was... Carcass of what kind of creature? Car an animal. One of his dogs died, or? I, think so. I don't know. I you got to ask All right, him. well, I, I will, you know, personally, I don't know what we can do. I can talk to Pete and, and uh, see what, how he feels about this uh, as a friendly gesture. Um, I can't force him to do anything legally. Um, I can suggest, or I would suggest perhaps if Pete isn't willing to, you know, uh, go any further with this, maybe uh, there's several options. You might have one as mediation, where you get a mediator from Franklin County, That's or you, you could. Uh, talk, talk I think oh, okay. Can. You might you might consider you and Pete getting a mediator to sort of try to rectify the dispute without bringing lawyers into it. Well, the only thing you got to do is cut cut the tree off. His trees hang, branches are hanging over. Yeah. Cut them back. How does that help the irrigation, though? It won't. It won't. Yeah, that, that's I, that's what I'm I'm sort of focused on. How does how do we how do we mitigate that? Well, you know, I'm I'm losing some nice small trees. Pine needles are falling on in, in the yard, and, and the shade is causing moss <clears throat> instead of grass. So you would be you would be mollified somewhat if at least he would cut the overhanging branches. Correct. Okay. Dan? I think somewhere in Arizona, anything that's hanging over your border is yours. Can we check on that? It's who mine? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why should I cut this? It's just make a note. I hire somebody to cut this tree back. If his branch make breaks a note and falls check on your property, mm -hmm. it's your property. See what sort of yeah. leverage we have. Tree <laughs> All right. Okay. I think. I'll talk to Pete, we'll check the zoning, and if the zoning, as Dan says, uh, then we'll inform Pete to that effect, and we will hope that he complies in a, uh, a way that's favorable to you both. And if not, then we'll go, go from there. Okay. You'll let, you'll let me know, I guess. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, absolutely. We'll keep you posted. Thank you. Sorry Thank you. about that. No. Yeah. All right. Diane Jensen, is Diane there? Hi, Diane. Hi. You can come closer to us if okay. you'd like. <laughs> Charter schools. Yes, um, you may have read a recent I, article in the Reporter. Um, I and thank you, first of all, for your time tonight. Because this is a very important issue. I, I'm a, a parent. A public school student. I'm a 
retired educator. I taught 35 years in the city of Chicopee. I also taught in Whateley as a permanent sub after retirement for Pete Christopoli as a preschool teacher. Um, and I'm, I'm a volunteer for the Save Our Public Schools campaign. Okay. The ballot question that will be on the ballot in November, question two, seeks to lift the cap on charter schools. And what a lot of voters don't know is that currently we're losing over $400 million a year out of our public school system to charter schools with very little or no accountability because they do not have local elected boards, like a school committee. Um, also, the folks that are seeking to lift this ballot are not fighting to lift the cap on the Horace Mann charter schools, and coincidentally, those have a local accountable school board. Um, so these are just the Commonwealth charter schools, many of whom have a corporate-like structure to their boards. Over 60% of them don't have a parent on the board. Um, and no local control. 96% of our students in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts go to public school, 4% go to charter schools. If this cap were to be lifted and this passes, we will get 12 new charter schools every year, but the way the ballot question is written is that is into perpetuity. So with the costs now, superintendents, especially in the rural areas, have gotten together um, to write letters to the editor and to call legislators because they're losing s such a significant portion of their budget. And the towns and districts aren't being reimbursed 100% for the kids. Only that first year the kids go out to a charter. After that, the reimbursement rate drops significantly. And in your packet there is a, uh, a handout that shows how much each district is losing. Frontier is losing $500,000 a year. The only, dis the only town in this Union 38 that isn't losing money is Sunderland, but their kids grow up and end up going to Frontier, so they are eventually affected by it. Um, most of the school committees in our district, all of them have signed a resolution um, and saying that they do not want the cap to be lifted because it's having such a detrimental impact on the staff that we can keep and the programs that we can keep in the public, in public education, which educates, as I said, 96% of our students. Also, the charters do take a disproportionately lower amount of kids with special needs, particularly those with moderate special needs or more. Uh, and English language learners are, are underrepresented in many of them. Now, the three charter schools that exist around here are pretty atypical for the state as a whole. But Northampton recently looked at their demographics and figured out that they're spending $2.2 million to educate 200 kids that are leaving to go to charters. So that's, it's pretty easy to do the math and see how much more they're getting per pupil. The League of Women Voters in Northampton has also been studying this statewide and they made a chart about Northampton. Um, they talk a lot in charter schools about a waiting list. We currently, though, in Massachusetts have 14,500 preschoolers and kindergartners that are not able to access quality public early education. And there are many districts that can't afford to fund the other half of the day of kindergarten because parents either have to pay or it's a lottery system. So those kids that are public school students are starting on a lower playing field than other kids in districts that have all day kindergarten. I was an early childhood teacher for 35 years in special ed, so I've read just about every efficacy study about early childhood and how much bang you get for your buck. So, I mean, I think that that's, that's pretty bad that we don't have the money in the public sector to fund those kinds of programs that nearly every politician and every expert talks about being so critically important and, and so worthwhile a thing to spend money on. Uh, and we don't have it losing so much money. This ch charter question is not about touching charter schools that exist, and in fact, currently, we are not at the cap. There, we can have many more. Um, but if we got 12 more a year into perpetuity, it would be the beginning of the end of public education, as we know. In other states where this has happened, Louisiana, Ohio, it's become a disaster. It's become a disgrace for John Kasich in the state, so much that he avoids all questions about it. Um, and we're not looking to demonize parents that want to have a choice because 
I'm for choice too. I'm a public school educator. I would, I would like to see some of our veteran, high quality teachers be able to have the, the power to go off and innovate and share those best practices. But that doesn't mean we need a charter school. We could do that in the public schools. We don't, we don't need to create satellites where only a few kids can get in when we're losing money for the 96% of the kids. So I would urge people to vote no on this. Um, you know, it's... So what would you like from us? Well, other towns, and I'm going to other towns. I've been to Conway, I've been to Deerfield. Deerfield uh, passed a resolution at the meeting just saying that they are in support of keeping the cap because they're, they understand how devastating it's been for their schools. I, I've heard Marty Barrett speak about it countless times on local TV, uh, and she's written letters with other superintendents about it, um, because the rural districts have a smaller budget to begin with, so when they get hammered, they get especially hammered, and they have a higher cost of transportation and everything that the city schools don't have. So um, basically, I'm doing this because I really care about this. The, the, Public education was created in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts by John Adams and Horace Mann. And I think it would be a shame if we allow this system that doesn't have any accountability to go forward with no accountability into perpetuity. And even our state auditor, and I put her letter in your packet, wrote a letter to the Joint Committee on Education in the House and the Senate way back in January before Rosenberg even introduced his legislation saying that the data that we get from charter schools is wholly inadequate, the methodology is poor, there's not enough of it, there's not enough of it across a broad reaching spectrum, there's not enough from all the schools, so all the schools aren't even reporting it. There's also an ad currently running for the opponents of this that are saying that it's going to bring all this money into public education. Well, the money goes directly out of the state coffers right to the charter schools. It doesn't come to the public schools first. It goes directly out of Chapter 70 right to the charter schools. And we don't always know where it's going, and that's why the garter of our money, Suzanne Bump, it's her job to make sure the taxpayer's dollar is being spent in an ethical and reasonable way. She's saying that, that she doesn't think that that's the case because she doesn't have any evidence to support it one way or the other. So I, I, I feel fortunate that my child was able, was able to go to Deerfield Elementary and to Frontier. They're excellent schools. I feel like the schools here are great. And this is a preferred district. Districts like this are not getting hit as hard because they are preferred. If this cap is lifted, it used to be just the underperforming districts. Now it's going to affect any district. So someone could move here and have a boutique charter school that is sports related or science related or any one of a number of things. And our schools that aren't used to losing those kids out to out of district would then be doing that. Uh, and that would be devastating can't sustain ourselves. Now we're operating from an old foundation budget in the Commonwealth that is from 1993. So we begin in retrograde already, and then we have the added costs of this system. Um, we, you know, Rosenberg tried to introduce some really good legislation with some other folks in the Senate that would have put many more good accountability measures on the charters and better ways to collect data and more transparency, but it wasn't going to get through the House because there are a number of people in the House that are in support of charter schools. So I assume they're in support of charter schools because it represents freedom of choice. I think choice is the issue that people talk about. However, the people that are funding this ballot question spent $350,000. They hired a company to get their signatures. They didn't have, it wasn't a So what are, what, are, what are they after? What's their motive? Money, our money, our tax dollars. And they are what? Well, the people that funded this were people like the Walton Foundation, Walmart, the Coke Brothers. So they want to get rid of public education because why? I'm just right. trying to understand the, the rationale of the opponents of 
your initiative? Well, clearly they're making money off of it. And how are they making money off of it? Well, they sell their products, their standardized tests, their technology. But those standardized um, tests are sold to the, to the district public schools as well. Yeah, I mean, the, exactly. the, the standardized tests are sold. That movement of. has infiltrated us. But but we're, you, you're you're now confusing issues a little bit. Well, it's it's yes, standardized yes. tests versus expanding or not expanding the cap. Well, and, I would ask this question back to you. Do you do you want to know where your tax dollars are being spent? Do you want transparency and accountability? For instance, do you want to know? how kids are chosen for the lottery in a charter school, because it's not a public lottery. We don't see how they're chosen. You know, we don't know all of the things that they do with the money. And they're also allowed to raise money privately, which public schools are not, can't do. Well, public schools can do that. But not to the degree that the charter no, they, schools No, they don't have the capacity to yeah. do it, but they, they are, let's, let's not, let's, let's be perfectly honest about it. The, charter, the district schools, have the ability to raise money however they choose to. They may not have the capacity to put the, the, the human resources into that fundraising, but they can do it. People say, but people won't because people will say the tax dollars should, that you can, they, it, it's, a, it's a tough raise. It's well, very difficult, and, it's, I, and I grant you that. It's a time consuming thing. Very time consuming. Right. Well, I mean, you need to have somebody doing that all the time. Very time. Well, one of the, I'm, I'm certainly sympathetic to your critique of the foundation budget. Since 1993, many towns have been screwed by the foundation budget. The, uh, uh, the, the uh, House and Senate have been less than helpful in changing the foundation budget, let alone funding public education with property tax, which is highly regressive and creates a lot of hot spots of poverty, poor education, Holyoke's in receivership, Springfield, and so, yeah. you know, that's a big problem. That's, you know, over and above charter schools, but what it does is it creates fertile ground for charter schools to sprout up and take advantage of people who have cars and means to get their kids to charter schools so they can avoid the failing public schools, which are underfunded because the foundation budget is misconstrued, is wrong. And we've been working on that lately for years. And we've been very active. I was on our school committee. I was a teacher in a public school. I was a union member. We've been trying to fix this for decades. Yeah. And we get the response, well, nobody really understands how the budget works, so we can't fix it because we don't understand it. That's literally what Stan Rosenberg said. There's only one or two people in the Commonwealth that understand how public education is financed. And we can't figure it out, so we can't fix it. Now, that's not a very good answer. But that's what's driving charter schools, in my opinion, plus the conservative group's attempt to get rid of the unions. Well, and, and to deprofessionalize the profession. To deprofessionalize it, right. Because the charters can hire non-certified teachers. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, so can private schools, though. So, public, so can private schools. schools. So can private schools. Yeah, but private schools people I, I, pay their own dollars. Right, but but I but but issue. with all due respect, right. I don't want to equate. There are fabulous teachers that are certified. Obviously, mm -hmm. there are fabulous teachers that aren't certified. What's the point? The, the point is, where the argument seems to be creeping into other areas. Well, and we should stick well, the with rate the charter. Charters for staff is much higher. It's double that of public. Perhaps, staff. yeah. They're employees at will with right. collective bargaining right? So it makes for a diff I mean, I know. A as I, am I an employee. I know so I, charter school, former charter school teachers who have been told you've got to work 10 or 15 extra hours this week and they have family commitments and obligations and they're trying yeah. to find another job. Basically. Okay. So right. I, I don't personally think as an educator that that's the best situation to put kids in. Do I think we can improve the public schools? Absolutely. But part of doing that is funding them adequately, and and certainly many other things, giving teachers the ability to be empowered to, to do things. That was the original intent of charter schools. It was a professor from UMass who wrote a paper, and Albert Shanker. They talked about teachers being able to go off and innovate and then share those best practices. We don't get any sharing with the charter schools. We're not getting any of these so-called best practices right. brought back to us. 
yet they're claiming to be public schools. We've even had to sue for records in a number of cases. Okay, so, um, so you would like us to uh, support? Consider pass, passing a resolution that would keep the cap on the Commonwealth Charter. I'm fine with that. I, well, I think I, I, this should go to the school board. Why, why your school board down? already approved it. Did the elementary school? A long time ago, yeah. Long time ago. I guess I want to I want to so pull back. And and I'd be happy at, 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 at the risk of, of, of putting my head in the lion's mouth. I want to pull back on this a little bit. Um, this board typically does not make decisions based upon the, the the very credible argument of one side of a discussion without at least inviting the other side of the discussion in so we can weigh one argument versus another argument. And if we were to sign this right now, that's exactly what we do. I've thought about this for years. I have no problem with okay, this. Okay. But, but, but if we're not in agreement, then and, we can And, and you know, an else. anecdotally, it, it, it is about choice. Um, They're spending $18 million on okay, this. Okay, so uh, let's, let's uh, so you would not want to do anything I, right now. Fred, how do you no, feel? No, I agree with Jonathan. All right, I, so we're I, not going to do anything, anything right now. We, need to do we will now. have somebody from... I don't know the uh, what's the uh, there's, the there's a trade association for charter one of those right wing groups that well, loves charter and, you know Deval Packard was a supporter of charter schools as well as President people. Obama so it's not just conservatives no and I'm not wild about their stance on okay. that either but that's just me <laughs> that's just me I like public schools and I, I really worry about the marginalized kids and the English language learners and the special needs students that I had being the first kids thrown under the bus in a privatized system because that is what is happening in other states in our country. And there's a lot of evidence to support that. Yeah. There's also a professor at UMass that's looking at where this money came from, and he's followed it back to the dark money places. Quite okay, easily. we don't need to go there. I, I like some charter schools. I like school choice. I don't like school choice. It's a complicated issue. Yeah, it is. The issue is really money and how we fund yeah. education, which we're not going to get to deal with tonight. But I thank you for your I thank you for your time. Your, thank uh, you very much. Presentation to us, and we will follow it up with I don't know hearing the other side. Okay. I don't know who the other side is. But. Just remember, I'm here, and I didn't have to be invited. Well, but okay. I'm here because I I am part of a grassroots group. No, are, are you are you an, you're an employee of MTA? I'm a part time employee. Part time employee. I just do uh, political action for the MTA. But I can tell you, I would be out there fighting. I, I'm just I, again, I'm just making sure that we have all the facts. <laughs> yes, I gave you my card. Right. And packet, yeah? Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. Uh, so, you know, if you guys would, you know, make a. Uh, or come up with a suggestion as to who wants to listen to in this issue. The Institute, but they're based in Boston. The which there's, there, there's a charter school association that's that's based in Western Massachusetts that I'm sure would be happy to come out That'd be and fine. talk about 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 the pros. This, you okay. know, at, at the end of the day, this is a school district issue, and we are told repeatedly that it, you know school district issues are school district issues. So I'm not sure why we're getting involved with this, but. Yeah. Oh, I think we should get involved with issues that are of concern to the general public. And okay. When people bring things that are concern for a governing body and a public body, I think we should respond. That's just me. Well, I kind of agree, kind of what Jonathan is saying that you know we need to hear both sides of the story. And and is it appropriate for a <clears throat> this is a political activist person? Paid paid person that I could see come here to talk to us. Is that even appropriate to come here? Yeah, sure. I, I think it's appropriate for anyone anyone to come in and, and give yeah. their and give their opinions. Absolutely. We're a democracy. And we I should agree. embrace all, all all perspectives and all opinions and we should never shut down debate and argument because that's just wrong. Well if the Pioneer okay. Institute would well, come out I'd be happy to listen. I think to we that should too. hear both. Well again there's a there's a yeah. there's a trade yeah. association. Or a trade association. Yeah. Which would be the, which would be somewhat the equivalent of and the I have MTA. good friends who work at charter schools and God bless them but is that something we want to get into? Do we want to hear the other side and take a position on this? Well, somebody is wants us to. Is that what we're? I, I, you know, deciding on. I am. I am a charter school proponent, so I have. I have no problem inviting someone in here, so that everyone sees both sides of the issue, and then they can make a, a, a decision based upon their weighing of the facts. Okay, I think it's okay for local 
government to make I have announcements on local issues and even yes, national issues. A question for All right, so as best as I can see, we're at public comments. No public comments. I we should move on to old business. FCAT cameras update. FCAT cameras update. Um, oh, you're yes. here. Chris Collins, Chris. General manager for FCAT, is to give us an update. How about I, an update? Um, so, oh, when I came before you before, a while back, you talked about wanting to upgrade the ability to cover these meetings. Yeah. And one of the things you talked about quite a bit was finding a way to put multiple cameras in this room. Deerfield recently upgraded their equipment. They had right. standard definition cameras. They were set in camera positions, three of them, and they had a mixer and they had a bunch of other things. Right now we're shooting on this, this meeting on one camera. And we can get their cameras. They're all yeah. Good. So what happened was when they pulled out the SD cameras and put the HD ones in, I just deductively, they don't throw them away. They're perfectly fine. I had a plan for them to bring them to Whaley. Right. Um, the problem is that the cameras were pulled and some other things were pulled, but some of the equipment for Deerfield stayed in Deerfield. So in order to complete the build out of this room, we needed to have an estimate done of what other elements we would need to be able to put mics in, put set, set camera positions, get a mixer, get graphics, all the things that you basically have the same ability, we'd have the same ability to cover you as we do in Sunroom, which has a multi-cam setup. The same company that did the Deerfield build out, I asked to come in here and assess, number one, what we needed to buy and how we would set it up and do a sort of a soup to nuts estimate of what it would cost. Um, and then it'd be up to you guys to decide if you wanted to spend that money. Okay. My understanding is you have about $46,000 in capital in your peg access capital account. I don't know if that's accurate or not. I don't know what the number is going to be, but it'll be far, far below that, I think. Deerfield, I think, spent 54000 to rebuild their entire system. This one would cost, without having to buy the cameras and all the other equipment, probably much, much less than that. I'm thinking maybe at the most in the 30s, but I don't know for sure. I mean, it's not cheap to do, but if you want to have this room hooked up, and the other part of this is we're not going to be able to get you guys hooked up for a live drop until we get a contract signed, which is the other thing I wanted to talk to you about briefly. Um, but that's the plan. And, and right now they're formulating the plan. I'll bring it to you. You guys can discuss it and decide if you want to spend that money. It's totally your call. I just wanted to make sure we got the ball rolling on it. The only other thing that would probably have to happen if this is going to happen is you would have to draft Brian would have to get with Doug and draft an MOU. Deerfield's fine giving the cameras up. It's not enough, it's not worth enough, the equipment's not worth enough to have it declared surplus property. So a simple MOU saying Deerfield gives Whaley this equipment to use, whatever, and then we'll figure out what we have to buy and then I'll bring you the plan and you guys can decide on it. So what's the problem with the way we got there? It's, it, there's no problem. It just would be better. It would be, it would be better <clears throat> for you. It would be better coverage. I mean, one of the things that I really want is for all these towns to have uniform coverage. You know, Sunderland's got a, a three camera setup. Deerfield's got a four camera setup. There's no reason why they shouldn't have the same setup. And honestly, I mean, we've got a lot of the equipment that is already there for the, for the use. So this is contingent on the on the drop thing being. Uh, oh no, we can do this before the drop is. So what does the drop do first? The drop allows you to go live. Right now, we can't go live from this room because we haven't got access to a, a drop from Comcast to be able to, the, the, the line comes into a modulator, we throw the switch, we go live, just like you did in the, in the, in the basement of the school. Um, that was one camera, but you could go live from there because you had a drop. Here, you don't have that. So the drop is a wire that comes from outside? Yeah. Comcast would have to send a wire <coughs> in and put in a, a, what's called a modulator that would allow us to override 15 to be able to, to, to go live. And what's the problem with Comcast doing that or not doing that? They're not going to do it until we have a contract with them. We're we are negotiating for it almost three years now, a 10-year cable contract. And one of the things that the Cable Advisory Committee was able to put into the, the latest draft was the mandate that they come out here and put in the ability to go live here. I've been trying since I got well, this geez, job. Well, it seems to me they're, they're a monopoly and they they should be serving the public here. We're the public. 
they could at least give us a drop. That can't cost them very much. Well, I've been trying to get them to discuss this for the better almost since I took this job. Well, could, why don't could I, I, yeah. could I make a couple sure. points? Just to close the loop on, on this thing first, and then I want to get to the Comcast <clears throat> thing. I, I think we should get an itemized budget for what you're proposing, yes. and also some type of a long range forecast of what other capital needs you foresee us having so we know if we spend two thirds of what we have in our in our in our bank account right now, what might that prevent us from doing down the road and how long will it take to build up necessary surplus to make other purchases? Wait, wait one second, John, because I don't want to the other thing and then because we do want want is an interesting word, should perhaps have better coverage in here. Um, I think that rather than placing this all on Chris's shoulders and the FCAT board and what have you, I would like to request that Comcast be offered a very friendly invitation to come chat with this board about the delays in the contract and help us understand and the, and the residents of Whitley understand why the delays are taking place as opposed to simply having, and you guys do great work, but I, they may, and my hope is they might listen to us more than they listen to FCAP. Well, actually, that's one of the other things I wanted to bring to your attention. In fact, I want to submit this letter to you. The last board meeting, the board of directors of FCAP are very impatient right now because for the last three years we have been, we have been, uh, and they go out, I should say, for the last three years, a lawyer representing the three towns of Whaley, Deerfield, and Sunderland have been negotiating a 10-year cable contract. FCAT really isn't involved in this. We can't do anything to spur the negotiations because the guy doesn't work for us, he works for you. Uh, the board took a vote, a unanimous vote at the last meeting, to send a letter to all three boards of selected. I finally got Bob to sign he was on the cape until about an hour ago. Um, and basically what it says is we are looking for the, the, the three selectmen and the three towns to send a very strong message to both the attorney representing these towns and to Comcast that we yeah. want a resolution of this contract and we want it hopefully by no later than the end of October was the date. That okay, we that's fine. That's that's fine. I, I, I honestly, I, I, I'm not sure the letter is necessary. This is the first that I... I just heard this, re wait, 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 Chris. This is the first that I've heard this request. So this letter makes it seem to me like people think that we've been dragging our heels. And I am happy to have Comcast. I've been on this board for I don't know how long now. And ever. Forever. For far too long. And I, I haven't had a lot of positive things to say about Comcast in the 13 years that I've been on the board. So I have no problem having that before us and having a friendly conversation about what the problem is and, and talking with Attorney Solomon about what the problem is. But come to us rather than rather than waiting the three years. And you're not the only one who's frustrated. I understand. Yeah, I would I would second that and third it and say, can we get the Comcast whoever to show up at our next meeting and say, give us a drop like this week. If not, why I, not? I have a tough time getting the, the representative on the phone. I don't, I don't. Yeah, but we're, we're a, a that's large fine. But uh, let's do it. I won't be at the next meeting, but if you guys can I'll carry the, the water. Next meeting. Yeah, yeah. Let's, sure. let's get the representative in here and say enough futzing around. John, you were going to say something? Yeah, just a, a point to be aware of that. I think Chris uh, mentioned he's going to have to have a part of this room as a control yeah. booth or something. So like some of has, yeah. Yeah, that would be up to you. Hopefully not that big. Same unit. Yeah. But really, to get a drop in it here, it doesn't sound like our like work, you know? No, the drop, the drop is, no, I think, no, a lesser no. issue than it is getting the equipment from Deerfield and getting it installed here. Yeah. I just want to be able to get a, a set of equipment in here that allows us to upgrade the coverage of these meetings, give you multiple camera <laughs> angles, and be able to actually cut from the board to the audience without having to worry about making an awkward camera so it's supposed to be better production yeah, that's right. well it's, it's video. yeah absolutely it's my right, right side is my better side so i like <laughs> to see it but in all seriousness i i'd like to get the mou drafted and get the equipment from deerfield and get the comcast people in here and hold them accountable to the you know the public service i mean after all 
they enjoy monopoly, they should be responsive. Uh, and the attorney that's and theoretically the attorney representing us. Theoretically yeah. our I, attorney. I sat in on one of those negotiating sessions last October, and literally they were arguing about punctuation at one point. It, it seemed like that. It was trivial stuff. We are not separated by much in this negotiation. Let's get everybody in here. But, but I don't want Comcast in here without, without the attorney. We need everyone because yes. we want it finished. But I just want to be very clear. That letter was not intended to make you guys look like you're, you're dragging your feet. It was just the board conveying to the select boards of all three towns, hey, you know, this really affects our ability to yeah, do business. Um, it wasn't as intended to assess blame or assign blame. That's fine. We're in the same we're in the right. same Just bring us in sooner. If you're getting frustrated, well, don't let your blood really boil. Let's let it simmer. Let's yeah. get it done. Okay. Yeah, let's get Thanks, it done. Chris. And anything I will formulate that capital list, but I mean, other than the server and this, I don't see anything coming up, but I'll, I will. Paul, I'll, can I cut in for one second? Sure, because while you're here, at our last meeting that we had in the other room, um, there was a conversation, John, about you guys were doing some stuff, and we asked you to pull it, to have a conversation with our FCAT board about work that you were trying to move forward. And since Chris is here as the FCAT employee, I'm wondering if that's happened, if that's gone forward at all. That doesn't ring a bell. He wasn't here. I don't. Who was it that we were talking? Oh, it was Dan. Yeah. Okay. It was yeah. this. Yeah, we've done. It was that's this. this. Yeah. That's this. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. There, it, there wasn't anything tangential. And okay. Okay. Great. Okay. Wonderful. So I'll get you that as soon as I get the, the quote from them. I'll bring it to you. Good. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Thanks, Chris. Okay. Thanks, Thank Chris. Thank you very much. And Dan, I apologize for confusing you and John. Uh, no, no, that's old business. Oh, the administrator update, my favorite part. Oh, administrator updates. <laughs> there's none? No, there's some. Oh, Sorry. No. Go on. I'm going to talk really quickly. Okay. Yes. Okay. Green Communities Grant. That's what the town has had since probably three years. Three years. Um, the school put out an RFP for the uh, energy control systems. Bids were due last Monday. The one bid that they received was uh, approximately $84,000, significantly lower than the estimate provided in the energy audit. The school is going to, uh, Bob Lesko from the school is going to follow up with the contractor to make sure he understands. That's good. We've been working on our breath for the school to do this for quite some time. Yeah, that's what I understand. Three years. Um, he'll have that conversation, and uh, Patty Kavanaugh will come to the next meeting August 30th Excellent. to Prepare. talk about the project. Prepared? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't make promises. Okay, next. Um, Conway School Report on the Town Center. There is a public meeting right. on September 20th for residents to review the report and provide input. Good. People should show up for that meeting. Thank you. Collins Center study. What is, date is that? I'm sorry. That is September. Tuesday, September 20th. Okay. Collins Center. That will influence the complete street study. I'm sorry. That that has a significant amount of bearing on the complete streets. Oh, okay. So it's important. I would encourage you guys to go just to get some background. That's sort of the Tuesday night. The, yeah, I can. Um, yeah, I'd like. It's, okay. It's a preparatory study. It's it's not solid, but it's, it represents community input on the subject. Okay. Collins Center study. Oh yeah. Bob, uh, salary survey and personnel policy oh, yeah. work. That is going to get underway. Good. Reminder, that, what's this? That is a salary survey of of employees. All employees? employees? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then analysis of personnel policies and recommendations, the best You're practices, brilliant. personnel That's policies. Brilliant. Okay. The water department um, has pulled together its staffing plan. Um, Wayne has received his full 1D and 1T license. Wow. wow. Really? That was issued in mid July. His, his, his license or his training license and training? Full. Seriously, how did that, how did that happen? That's one one wonderful. Um, was it my influence? Do we want? Well, I don't know. What happened or what? I called up the guys and I said, "What's going on here?" I, I actually did. I didn't think they heard. Me. So I thought it was going to take eight thousand hours. Or yeah. yeah. Uh, Whatever. I don't he's, know. He's certified, right? And it's. I asked him. Have we framed it? I asked him to to call and double check, and he's done that, and he has the license okay, in his good. possession. Brilliant. Good. Okay, good. So we'll submit that, and we should be. Okay with the administrative consent order. Good. We Good. Have the proper coverage. Um, everybody knows about the the fire uh, on Sunday, early Sunday morning with the tobacco barn. No. 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 
Wow. Where was it? Behind the school. Behind okay. the school. Well, I don't live near the school. The Sanderson big barn behind the school. You know, it's tobacco oh, barn. Yeah. It, it became, that barn became just part of the backdrop and you didn't pay attention to it. And now that it's gone, you're like, oh, there was something there, wasn't there? Yes. Oh, okay. So, that barn is gone. Gone. It was a And the fire bigger. department did a good job making sure that the fire did not Correct. Move towards the school. Suspicious. I give way or or lightning strike. Lightning John strike. and Keith are not here, so I would give. That's what John said. Wait, okay, well, the fire department, they're a team. Yeah, but Wayne did an excellent oh, job. Was, he was in charge. Okay. okay. Nice. Yes, yeah, early Sunday morning. Yeah. Did he run across the field? Okay. Yeah. Okay, guys. <laughs> Let's proceed. So here's why I'm bringing this up. We have approximately 20 to 30 dead trees yeah. that are adjacent to the school driveway. Yeah, that probably need to come down before they become a danger to. Okay. Those aren't coming down anytime soon. People but. on the school property. Yeah. Are they on town property? Yes. Okay. So that is that is something that we need to consider. But but I, I I'm not an arborist, but I mean there are trees in the Yellowstone fire from 25 years ago that haven't come down. That you know so it's yes. not like it's imminent. And St. Helens, don't forget St. Right. Helens. Right. So. But I agree, they have to come down, but let's not yeah. rush off with our chainsaws tomorrow. Do right. I have a tree warden? Yeah. I think yes. it's well within our purview. Well, shouldn't yeah, the tree warden, about the cost. Shouldn't the tree warden be involved in doing this? He's on vacation. Yes, so I mean, before, I just want to make you aware that, yeah. uh, that that's the situation. Okay, um, good. And not that close to the school. No. No, no. They're, they are immediately adjacent to the driveway. Right, someone would need to know what they're doing to make sure the tree falls in the right direction. So, I have a chainsaw. Um, we can have the tree warning table. I have one, but it doesn't start. I would say coordinate with okay. the tree warning. We will have the tree warning yes, table. We will. Right. See That's what he suggests. What we That's what do. we pay so, in the big box. All right, next. Town hall painting. The bids, uh, the request for quotes went out. They are due next, this Friday, August 19th. Okay. Do so, we have any in yet? No. There's probably eight or nine people who have taken out the okay, uh, great. specifications. We received a request from the letter of Deerfield. From the uh, for the letter of Deerfield from the town of Deerfield, um, our to, to sign a letter in support of their Mass Works grant for um, improvements to <coughs> the South Deerfield headworks at their uh, sewage I'm, plant. I was when I read that I was confused. I, I'm I'm missing why a signature from this board and I'm not opposed to signing it helps with their grant because we're not. I, I don't know. What am I missing? I think it has to do with them dumping effluent raw effluent into the river that then flows through Wayland. This is this is support for the various areas that are affected if they're so if we there. help them clean their act up, they will keep our river clean. Our river clean. Okay. I'll we fall on my side. What field. is effluent? Effluent is oh okay. Yeah. The discharge. Yeah, 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 thing is. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I got that. I just wasn't familiar with that term. Anything we can do to help our neighbors. That's fine. We're at okay. We'll have a letter for you. To no time. cost oh, to us, then. Okay. Sarcasm, maybe. Just a letter at this point. Right. Okay. Okay. Letter of support. Um, there's also a letter in the packet about the central office relocation to the Frontier Middle High School. Oh yeah. And it, it was official. It was an official letter, uh, essentially informing them that they were terminating their interest in relocating to Fort Sandy Lane. Okay. Okay. It turned out that only a few members of their board were actually aware of, of this initiative to begin with. So, lest anyone think that it was a groundswell from their entire board, um, they're sadly mistaken. There were a lot of people who were completely in the dark as to even the concept of moving. So I just don't want, I just want people to think that, that we don't have a tenant because we did something that didn't make friends. I mean, it, it, it just, okay. Okay. And it wasn't the private, in the pri maybe the meeting before that, it was asked if, if the superintendent could be invited um, to attend one of these meetings. Well, I guess, yes. And she is available August 30th. I know you're not going to be here. Well, I, I had plans to reach out to her anyway on my own, so if you guys want to meet with her, that's fine. I guess. I mean, it's good. I mean, it's nice. She, she, she would like to come out. And, and I would love to meet. The relationship's important. Yes, it is. Okay, new police cruiser is in service. Police cruiser is fire truck 
is pending training before we okay. service. Is the police cruiser okay. going to be painted or is it going to be on mark? That is undetermined at this point. Let's get that on mark. Do you have a, a preference? Because I can. I, know, I, I think was it Deerfield has one on mark. They've seen it around. I, you know, I, I like police visible, personally. I, I think it adds to community policing, it adds to, but I'm not a police professional. Well, that's the second second one, right? I, I get it, but you know, we, we have we have people in, in town who, 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 who are, are concerned that they don't see the police around and having an unmarked cruiser could exacerbate that concern because they, the cruiser may be around and it's, Going stealth. Okay. So I, I just soon have it marked personally. But shall we have a future can meeting? Can we leave it up to the chief to decide? Absolutely. Sure. Which one? Chief to, chief to decide. Yeah. Chief to decide. Okay. Well, you know, unless it costs an arm and a leg. In case. Well, will that come out of his budget or is that an extra? <clears throat> well, I don't think it's included in his current budget. <clears throat> He has that in his budget. He, he has that in his budget. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, he has that in his budget. I'll right. talk with him about that because I, I intend to meet with him anyway. So is there one that's being retired or sold? What's, what's the plan was to use it for details. So I tried to get it for John's so there's three? rescue vehicle. But so there's going to be three? Three or four. I'm not sure. Three or four police cruisers. I, I'm not honestly not sure of the count. There's at least three. The third being retired, I think. The one that they're retiring, they were going to save and use. They're taking the radio out of that, putting it in the move cruiser. But they were going to use that for details, is what the chief said. Okay, well, I, I'll. So I was trying to grab it for the fire station. Yeah, well, let's make use of it. We bought it. But he wants to keep it together. As long as it's being used. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm done. You're done. Okay, let's Except move on. Except I'm back on in a second. New business. Complete streets. Tier two. That sounds like. Yeah, I can meet wow. again. Welcome back. Complete streets program. We adopted a complete streets policy. It was submitted to Mass DOT. It received an 87. Scores above 80. Towns that score above 80 are are invited to go to tier two. Ooh. Tier two is the development of a prioritization plan, which is you list your complete streets related, complete wow. streets eligible projects, and you prioritize them. Also in tier two, there's the opportunity to apply for $50,000 of technical assistance grants. Um, those have uh, very specific uses. Most of them are safety audits. Um, they're at the study level. Okay. The informal complete streets, my, myself, uh, met with Keith, um, Judy, and Fred Barron to discuss okay. this. And we were hoping that the, the $50,000 of technical assistance could be used for design work, but it cannot. Um, can we make study work, can we make design work look like study work? Try. Try. <laughs> okay. So at this point, I want, I want to follow up with Keith. Uh, on whether he thinks there could be any use of those of those technical assistance funds, but that would not preclude us from from going ahead and pulling together the prioritization plan. The request from uh, I believe the request from the planning board is that the planning board be tasked with um, taking the lead for de for developing the prioritization plan. That's fine. With me. Now, is this like the semifinals where uh, tier two we get to the playoffs um, or what? Tier two is when you present. You, either you ask for funding assistance. So you go ahead with the prioritization plan. Okay. Our, our reading of the funding assistance is that it's for community consulting and, and developing uh, consensus around things that need to be done. Okay. We think that that's what the Conway study did for the town center. Okay. And so once we go through that phase. So we've pretty well done that so unless Keith has discovered something different and he could well have I, th I think we're we're proceeding with trying to develop the specifications for the exact projects then we can go out for the get actual we need little things like engineering drawings well, that cost when, but right okay when Keith was in here before we talked about part of this project would be an assessment of dangerous intersections in town 
and I know that I that I mentioned specifically the intersection of, of, of North Street and Swamp Road because of the high embankment on the corner there that's that is part, part a nightmare. And actually the so you need to come on the twentieth because the, the study actually recommends reconfiguring that. Reconfiguring that. As well as Strip and Weber Road. Right? And Haydenville. They both come in at well, that's acute for the angles. Other, that's for that other project on Haydenville Road. It's Oh, that's for the other. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. If uh, you have to do, you have to get tier two funding before you can apply for tier three. No, tier two funding, and again, you know, Keith, Keith has the Keith is really calling the shots here, but the way I read it, tier two funding is for what one of the actuaries I work with used to call fluff. I mean, it's. It's sort of the consensus building, the, the the getting the community behind you, the sort of thing Northampton did a lot of moving traffic, moving gardens and islands and things around Main Street to try and get people's reaction to them. So I think the CPA money did that with the, I mean, assuming that the focus of this the study, the Complete Streets is not limited to the center of town, but that was the, the primary focus of it. And that Conway study had three community meetings and got a lot of input and prioritized them. And I, it's not the world's be, on, be all and end all, and there are recommendations there that people will like and people won't like, and I'm sure they won't all be done, but I think by and large that that constituted what the funding assistance part is aimed at. Now, Keith may have found something different, but that was his opinion when we last talked to him. Yeah, there's, there's a list. Capital investment plans, net, network gap analysis, roadway maintenance plan, pavement management system, private development projects, ADA assessments, bicycle pedestrian assessments, roadway safety audits. I just want to double check with him before, yeah, well, before we foreclose the opportunity. But do you, do you have to get no. Tier two funding before you, no, you can go straight. No, you, you can go to straight to you can tier three. That. Okay. Uh, and um, you can you can forego the funding. The town would complete its prioritization plan as part of tier two. Right. So it prioritizes the complete streets projects. Would submit that to Mass DOT for approval, and then it would be eligible to apply for tier up to four hundred thousand dollars in construction funding as part of tier three. And I believe the next round for for uh, funding for tier three is, is March of next year. But we would need engineering done before that. Okay. Chapter 90 funds can be used for the engineering, but Keith doesn't have any available this, this fiscal year. And is there a commitment if you get the 50000 for technical assistance, is there a commitment that you have to construct something after that? No. But I think it's simply pla it's planning money. Right. If, if there's no specific need for it, it seems like a waste of time. I mean, it's going to take us. It's going to take us till March to to develop the specifications and everything. Now, if we we step back and do things like traffic safety audits and stuff like that, we'll, we'll lose another year. But but under here, yeah, I'm very familiar with it. Roadway maintenance plans, pavement management systems. Does Keith have that already? I mean that that is an expense to do that. So that's it's, that's the one thing that stuck out to me was the pavement management yeah. systems. They say roads is is. Uh, as assistance to develop both of them. Yeah. Uh, that's the one thing that's like so I don't know if Keith has that or not, but that certainly would be, I guess, a, a good thing to have. Maybe you could vote to go ahead with the prioritization plan subject to Keith's deciding that if, if Keith, let me rephrase it, if Keith is interested in pursuing the technical assistance funding to go with that, otherwise to authorize the planning board to to go ahead with the prioritization plan can, development with Keith's assistance. Can I? Yeah. Because I'm I may be missing something. Is the prioritization plan you're talking about the inside the letter dated July 26, or is that completely separate? It's completely separate. Completely separate. That, separate. that was the like authorization to go to the plan. The plan it itself would be a list of the project. Right, I'm just because I'm looking at a list here and I wondered whether that list was just going to transfer to 
the, the, the prioritization plan will be X number of feet feet of sidewalks to be to be installed on such and such a road, and so many crosswalks and so many feet of bicycle lanes, and it will be very very specific project specific. Right. Right, I get that because there, there are specific projects on this letter. It will identify those are types of projects. No, these are specific projects. If there's no limits, there's no limits where it's actually going to be done. Say, That's why I'm just trying to get clarity. Say what the costs are, what, okay. the, what it will the GPS coordinates are. Added specificity are, to these it will, unique projects. It will believe the specificity. Okay. Because I, I just because I this is a DOT spreadsheet. I, I mean, it, the, the the reason I'm asking is that I, I I see projects related to changes at the center school, and the future of the center school is very much up in the air long term. So I, I want to make sure that we're not, not spending money. It's not necessary that you do the projects in the order they're prioritized. It's not necessary that you do them at all. And there's a, at least a five year time horizon on the plan. Okay. Okay. Okay, good. I, I guess I would, I would volunteer if the board agrees to be on a part of the committee to prioritize. Sort of an ad hoc to the yeah, planning board? Well, yeah. Well, you look, obviously, the Tower Commissioner says in other boards, I guess I would volunteer to represent this board if you agree. Fine with me. Fine with me. Okay. Okay. Anything else on? So, so who's gonna who's gonna be in charge of, of the prioritization plan? Well, it's gonna be the it's gonna be the planning board. The planning board. The, with, with, with without reach to okay. other board liaisons. Okay. Do with, I have that right? With Keith yes. and, and so Keith. Yeah. Keith will be, yeah. Sort of Keith. If, if you were doing, going to do a flow chart, it would be planning board and Keith as, as, as co-leads. Yep. And there has to be mutual agreement to go forward. Sounds reasonable. Right. Okay. okay. APR policy. APR policy. Margaret Christie had submitted this draft APR policy um, for the board. She's not, uh, we're not seeking final approval of this. It was um, to give you an opportunity to comment very briefly. With, through the APR program, the state will pay 80% of the difference between the value between the land, the full fair market value of the land, and the land as restricted to agricultural use. The state pays 80%. There's a local match of 20%. There are certain things the town can do to reduce that local share. One of those is to um, adopt a right to farm policy. Which we have. Yep. The other one is um, to have an agricultural commission. Which we have. Agricultural commission, which you have. And the third one is to adopt a policy that makes it, I will say possible, it makes it more difficult um, for illegal structures to be built on APRs, uh, on land that is uh, under APR. It makes it difficult to build an illegal structure? Yes. Isn't it? Well, it illegal? Illegal? What happens is that sure. there's there's a lack of communication between the building inspectors who issue the building permit and whether and whether they check or see that there is that the land that's proposed for is under APR is under an APR. So what would be an example of an illegal structure? Um, a house, a house, any, anything. Any non-form so structure on APR land. A landowner might build a non-farm structure on APR. So they might build a house. <clears throat> yes. Might build a house. It's been done before. And so, so we don't want that. That's illegal. Like, it's illegal. So I'm missing the. Why do we need it's an added layer? It's already illegal. It, is it, you're saying a building it has inspector does in check many towns. That is, as Brian just said, okay. the building inspector doesn't know that the land is under APR. Issues. But the, but the but the but the person has to go to the town at some level. Yeah. Not we have checks and balances on. The check and balance on building a single family house is the building inspector. That's it. Yeah. Period. So maybe they have to report to the planning board and get approval before no. they. Well, maybe they should. And and the other problem, well, a single family house just if you meet the setbacks, I mean, 
So wait, so Judy, you're telling me that APR. the building inspector doesn't have some database of APR land in his jurisdiction that he can easily check? That's what this is. That's about. what this policy requires. That's this policy says that the building inspector shall check the database. Well, let's. Well, let's. let's that's that's all that I we move, have to do. I move we accept the policy. That's all we have to do to get the state to pay another five percent. I move well, we accept. Of course, it should do this, that. Okay, we're all in favor. So this has nothing to do with, with how to whether ease or not ease of APRing a land. No. Okay, no, are we for this policy? Oh my gosh, it, it is, is as okay. simple as you think it is. Yeah. All right, let's do it. Let's the move on. Match from 10%. I'm dumbfounded right. okay. that it doesn't happen already. Okay, moving right along. <laughs> Blue ribbon request. Do not assume that things happen. Right now. I, I was going to make an editorial comment, Judy, but I held my tongue because we're on camera. The question was asked today whether we we've reached our 10 building permit limit for new housing. We haven't. Nobody knew. Nobody knows. And that's what there's what the building inspector should come in. No one knows. No one knows. No one knows. And, and found out. By the way, that's going to be some, when someday somebody's going to challenge that and we're going to lose. No, no, I, I'm just, there's already case law on that from Hadley. That, that, and it lost. Hadley lost. Yeah. yeah. So they can't limit the number of buildings. We can't here. limit it. Well, I think we still have it as a file. It's still on force. Okay. Even though we could get challenged on it. Right. Right. I was going to say, I was con I was certain that it happened. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Next, Blue Ribbon Request. There is a letter from the Massachusetts State Police Wives um, seeking approval to place State ribbons. State Police Wives. Mm -hmm. To place ribbons in or around the center of the town. Um, to show support for all of our law enforcement. Well, we support them with our tax revenue, don't we? I mean, what's the problem here? I think this is a visual support. Um, to like the yellow ribbons? Or? Like the yellow ribbons. I mean, they, they, they blue do. Blue ribbons. Mm -hmm. they, then these will be blue ribbons. Is there a time limit how it's going to be on? or Forever until they blow away to people's yards? At this point, it is completely wide open. Well, and, and keep in mind that people can put the blue ribbons on their private property at any time they want for as, for as long and however many they want. This would be if they wanted to put blue ribbons on on trees or poles on public property. Okay. Correct. I think it's a, great, a good idea. I think we should show support for anybody who is, 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 is trying their best on behalf of people. I mean, if people want to put up red ribbons for us, Knock yourselves out, but I, I I have no problem with this. Well, is if it's on trees, yeah. But how about utility poles and all that? We don't have any jurisdiction over that, do we? Well, I I, I I don't know. I mean, I don't care whether they do, but no. But but people put up missing cat signs on right. telephone poles all the time. See. I, I think where did, this came from the wives of state police officers. Yes, yeah, somebody approached me actually. Um, Not the husbands, the wives. So the wives. Assuming that there are no. Female police. Well, it's W cap. It's all in caps. W I V E S, which I assume. I mean, we have a state police officer who lives here in town. Yes, we do. Yeah. And I'm assuming that her husband would be supportive of this, but he may or may not be a member of the Mass State Police wives. W -I, -V -E -S. I mean, my dad was a member of the League of Women Voters, but he was a guy. And this is only the center of town. It's this. I, I think that they are generally referring to the generic center of a town. Okay. I don't. I don't see the problem with this. Okay. I mean, they do put their lives on the line. Well, yeah, they do. Motion to allow this. Sure. Okay. Second. Cemetery Bid Award. Cemetery Bid Award. This was the f second phase of the restoration in the cemetery. And it was $30,000, I believe it was of CPA funds. And we put out the um, request for quotes and we have one back. It is from the same company who um, did the previous work, Gravestone Service Up New England. And it's in your packet. It was for um, $29,500. I worked with um, the Dar uh, Darcy Tozier, yeah. cemetery commissioners, and they are in favor of the select board awarding the bid. 
Is there a time limit when this work would be done, completed? Does this fiscal, this calendar year, or does uh, this go till what, till it's done? The idea is that it would be done uh, before the winter. There's no explicit time limit. Okay, so this is primarily historical preservation, is that right? CPA Historic Preservation Funds. Okay. The CPC was very enthusiastic about the work that this firm had done previously, okay. as was the cemetery. I'm fine. All right. Okay, yeah, that's, that's fine with me, but I, I guess in the future I'd recommend some completion date just to it's hard for something like that because of weather and conditions. Well, you can either go this year or next year. I guess to know when it ends, I mean, this could drag on forever if the guy goes bankrupt or gets ill or sick or something. I mean, the money's going to... pay for what he does. No. I know, well, I know, but I guess I used to having contracts with completion yeah. dates. So when the invitation for rent quotes that we put out, we, we said the work shall be completed by November 30th, 2016. Oh, okay. Unless an yeah. extension to work is... Um, Unless an extension. Yeah, okay. Um, well, that's fine. Okay. Judy, what's, a, what's a P1 and P2 stone? The cemetery commission had CPA money three or four years ago to do a master plan. And um, the master plan identified the, the stones that were in the work, most need of work. So P is P1. And is it, so Pro is, is that like a parcel within the cemetery or are they specific no. types of stones or? It's a priority given to the need of work involved. So, so priority one, priority two. That's all I needed to know. Yep. Okay. Okay. So with regard to cemeteries, uh, they're town property, is that correct? The so three, any, the three. The three, the three. West, center, and east. But the little one is not. So I assume that any resident of town can be buried, has a right to be buried in, in one of the cemeteries. Space available. Space available. And, and we have space available. Okay. They have to buy a plot. They have to buy a plot, right. But once you're in, well, once you're in. <laughs> you're in. <laughs> you're in. <laughs> you're in. No turning back. <laughs> I want my money back. The, the, the intent here is to work in all these cemeteries. I think last time it was mostly in the center town, yeah. Do you know how many stones needing repair will be left after this is over? Too many. Okay. And the, I think the, this is phase two, this will bring it to 45,000. I think the original estimate was something like 150,000 to do the Dollars, work. you mean? Yeah. Right. I, I just, is it half of them or is it? Okay. Well, it's, I, I it's, can't answer that. It's, um, it's fine. Sure. I can tell you that but the work that was done was fantastic. Oh yeah, no, no I'm not. I'm just wondering. P three, P four, and P five. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Okay. I think it raises very interesting policy questions, which we will leave to another time. But moving on. So we're okay with with awarding that bid. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Fine. Town hall reuse request for qualification update. Ah. So. Town Hall request for qualifications. Little background. Um, August 2nd, the Historic Commission and Municipal Building Committee jointly appointed a review committee to review the submittals that we have received in response to the RFQ. We had received uh, four, four, four responses. Greenberg Associates, Coon Riddle, Jones Witsit, and Reinhardt Associates were the four firms who had responded. Um, so a review committee was appointed by the Historic Commission and the Municipal Building Committee, and the review committee was tasked with ranking the architect design firms and providing a recommendation to the select board. And all this is being done in accordance with the town's designer selection procedures. So the review committee met and ranked the four proposals based upon their written submission. Okay. There was uh, criteria included in the request for qualifications that went out and it was essentially a spreadsheet and then pretty support. And they were, the, the firms were also ranked upon in-person interviews okay. um, that were held the, the following week. And they, in terms of the written scores, there was a half a point difference between um, Jones Whitsitt and Reinhardt. Then there was, Kuhn Riddle was ranked third and Greenberg Associates was ranked fourth. Um, 
Greenberg Associates, uh, we did not request an interview with them. We requested interviews with the top three. So uh, the review committee interviewed the top three. So Jones would sit, Reinhardt, and Kunrudo. And after those interviews, the review committee met and they um, voted three to two to um, designate Jones Witsit Architects as the top as the top firm, with Reinhardt Associates second and Kuhn Riddle third. So the, the action of the review committee was to recommend um, to the Board of Selectmen, in accordance with the designer selection procedures, that the, that the Board of Selectmen would solicit a fee proposal from the top ranked firm. So that is the action that, that the would be next in terms of our designer selection procedures. Because the RFQ did not include financial bid documents. The RFQ did not ask for price as a component of the decision. Okay. So we're here to say go for it with Jones Whitsett or, well, Jones Whitsett was number one. Correct. Okay. So that's, that's the way the designer selection procedures were adopted by the town in 2014. Yeah. And the next step would be for the select board to um, solicit a fee proposal and try to negotiate a, a reasonable contract with the top ranked firm. And the alternative, if we were not to do this? Um, <coughs> so if, it, if, the, if the board of selectmen doesn't feel that they can come to a reasonable agreement with the top ranked firm, they can reject the top firm and move down the list. Or um, if it can't be done with any of them, then the, the select board could reject all the bids and we could start. Well, are you I guess asking? From no, I, I just want to know what ramifications are for doing X, Y, or Z. I yeah. don't, this don't read into. Okay. Yep. So that's the process. If, if we can't get a reasonable fee with the top one, then you can go down the list. Or, the, I mean, the board is welcome to, at this point, re reject all proposals and and if, we are where we began. If if, I'm a neighbor. if it came to this, could we, would we have to go in the order, if we couldn't come to a, an agreement with Jones Whitson, yep. could we? Do we then go to Ryan Hart? Have to go to Ryan Hart, or could we go to Kuhn Riddle? Or can, in other words, can the board do whatever we want despite right. the recommendations of the committee? Probably because the committee's advisory. advisory. Not that I want to No, I'm that. just, I just. Right. The, um, the, approver, the approval body shall review the list of finalists and may exclude any designer from the list if a written explanation of the exclusion is filed with the committee and maintained in the contract file. So you could exclude somebody if, if you have, if you have it. But I don't have any reason to exclude anybody. Oh, I get that. I, I, I get that. I just, I, I you know, and. And I, and I wasn't involved, obviously, but, you know, Reinhardt did Buckland. And there isn't, if you're looking for historical preservation, they missed the mark. Oh, <laughs> by a long shot. By a long shot. Um, and that may be a function of the budget that they were handed by the town. Uh, who knows why? But, I mean, they they missed historical preservation. So I'm just wondering if, <coughs> if down the road, if we, if we couldn't come to agreement with Jones, what's it? And we wanted to put something in writing while we were leapfrogging Ryan Hart and going to Kuhn Riddle, that would be acceptable. Yes. Okay. Is, does the RFQ say that the order of selection, if we, does it mention in here that we have to Negotiate with the first, the top pick. No, the RFQ, not our our, our design or criteria selection. Does the RFQ say that we we negotiate a price with the best ranked can, candidate, and if we don't agree, we move to the second? Does, does the RFQ say that? say that? Yes. Does the RFQ say that? It's a good question. I don't know the answer off the top of my head. Why? Well, are we legally bound by that condition right, in the RFQ? Then, if yeah, it says we that. don't want to skip Reinhardt if we have to abide by the and, wording right. of our. Yeah, and I think that the other thing that we need to keep in mind, 
we all, I say all, but some of us have some history and experience with, with these contractor architects. And I guess that was what the review team was, was supposed to kind of uh, alleviate personal biases and, and, and look at criteria to evaluate and rank these <coughs> architects. And there was criteria for, before we even got to the interview, to uh, rank them. And during the interview, there was questions that they all asked, all were asked, and responses were considered. So, uh, yeah, some of these may have done work before or were familiar with work before that had problems or issues. Uh, I think that may came up during, during this whole process that was considered. So. I think just because one of us has an, an issue with one of these architects from 10 years ago, <coughs> conditions have changed, so that may not be as important today as it was then. I don't know, we got members of the review committee. I'm speaking, I'm not on a review committee, I, I guess chair of the building committee. Uh, I sat in on some of the meetings. Uh, I'll ask the review team here, any members want to talk about that process and how comfortable they feel with the ranking? Yeah, they feel pretty comfortable with it. <clears throat> I think everybody looked at all the candidates, you know, pretty open-mindedly. Um, the issue with Buckland was brought up and I questioned um, that architect on it. And that had largely to do with the mechanical person that they employed at the time as far as designing. The major issue was the HVAC and the chimney and so forth. Mm -hmm. And that person was let go. So they have new people on board and they felt that that was a problem, you know, with that whole Buckman thing. And, you know, who knows as far as the historical design and stuff, like you say, and I don't think it was fair for us to look at that, you know, for that particular issue in ranking them. You know, the whole ranking system, the point system came out a half a point between Jones Whitsett and Reinhardt. And so looking at the qualifications that were in the RFQ, they came out pretty balanced. As, as did Coon Riddle too. So but I think it, it is a little unfair to go back 12, 13 years and look at one job they did where they provided information on numerous other jobs that they've done and the only issue, or the only interaction I had with them, and it wasn't with them, it was they did the Palmer Police Station. I brought this up when we were going to do the major renovation as far as the cost per square foot and how that building was done. It was a new building, you know, versus a redo, but um, everybody over there was ecstatic with the way things went, and they got a real nice building for real reasonable costs. And I think that's, you know, what we're trying to do here is keep some of the costs down. And so I think that's why a lot of the voting went the way it did. But again, I don't think it's fair to go back that amount of time where people within the organization change. And like somebody said, we don't know what the parameters were back then, et cetera, so. Well, I, I, think I, I, think that, I, I think I should say that I was concerned about possible appearance of conflict of interest because I know Margot Jones. Uh, I also know Chris Riddle, I know, and I've worked with people in Reinhardt. And when I was an HVAC engineer, my wife actually worked for Reinhardt. So I have ties with Reinhardt, and I have ties with Riddle, and I have ties with Jones. So I talked to the State Ethics Commission and I filled out a form making those connections known. And I talked to a lawyer and she said, well, as long as you have no familial relationships or financial interests with any of the principals or partners, then you're okay. So I, I just wanted people to be clear about that because I didn't want, you know, any sort of problems to arise from that. We all know Jones because we've worked with them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's hard not to know these people if, you're, if, you've, had, if you've been in the business. Uh, and as far as I know, they're all reputable firms. And I know. In general, we just, I mean, pretty, any of the firms, even Greenberg, that we rejected, would probably be able to handle this. It's part of the issue is doing it in a timely fashion. And yeah. That's one of the advantages that Jones Woodset has, that they've been doing this for quite some time for us. Well, yeah, and of course, we know Chip Greenberg from yeah. previous experience. We have a very, very tight schedule. 
Okay. And Did you see the RFQ? And the No, I'll have to check. Okay. Joe Switzit comes with a very good knowledge of, of the building <coughs> and the background that gives them a, a head start. Uh, but I do think in terms of the process you're ahead of yourself if trying to figure out what happens if the first step doesn't I, I'm just planning. I'm just sure. not making decisions, mm -hmm. but just I just want to know what I, what lies ahead. Well, I said I. I would. Okay. I would have no problem making a motion to accept the recommendation of the committee um, and entering into negotiations with Jones Woodson. I second it. In favor. Aye. Aye. Good. Aye. Good. So, so as thanks a, to the committee, by the way. Yes. And to Brian, we put in a and to Brian. Of Part of the committee. And to all of us who have labored mightily for this building. As a practical matter, who is going to enter into negotiations with John Woodson? You. Good. Yes. Lieutenant <laughs> Weinstein. <laughs> you need a chair. I guess yeah. uh, I would volunteer since I've been involved since the very beginning. And know what we're looking at now for the revised scope of work, I guess. Uh, if it comes down to arguing what needs to be done, what doesn't, well, I think... You're negotiating think, price at this point. Right, yeah, you're not I negotiating know, scope, know, you're but negotiating but price. They're, uh, it's kind I of think related. this is entirely a price, and, and yeah. the scope of work is not... The process is an issue, not the scope of work. Okay, well, whatever you decide. I think both Reinhardt and Joan Switz have made it clear that they, they would be available for multiple meetings beyond what was in the RFQ, which is very helpful. Good. Okay. So, Brian, Fred, I know. I, I just like Brian only, and I am going to say, I've said it before, and how long have you been here now? Two months? Month and a half. Month and a half. Give me more and I'm say it, And I'm going to say it for the next umpteen years. I, I like Brian negotiating because I like a lawyer negotiating. Oh, that's a good point. That's my only. Plus, welcome to the <laughs> club here. Maybe it's time for you to get your feet wet. Yeah, yeah we're not paying legal rates. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. He's well aware of that. Yeah, and you're done procurement and all that stuff. So, so I would feel very comfortable with Brian. So who would sign the contract, and Brian would? No, the chair of the board would. Wouldn't so it? come to. I guess. Brian has a right. signing board. I, okay. On a contract for the town. Okay. Okay, so Brian's going to negotiate the contract and bring it to you, you as the board to right. approve or not. Okay. Does the board want to approve it? Want to approve what? If we can do it before your next board meeting, it would give, give the committee. I mean, I don't want to have you not have the oversight you want, but if we could get an extra week in the schedule, it would be very helpful. What's Isn't the, the price what, based on, on the amount of work required? Isn't that how they decided that before? Well, if it was a one point four million, it was no, ninety four thousand. Not for this phase. Not for this phase. This is no. just for the, the plans, the layout. Just the plans. It has nothing to do with the price of the budget. So a, a week is. Really, I, I don't know what the urgency is, so I apologize. We're trying to get plans by end of November. End of November. And that's for grant proposals, which require. So and you think the week is going to be a deal breaker? Well, we want to be able to. Can we not? It's not can, a deal breaker. Can we do it in a week? I mean, I don't know. Uh, skip the thought. How about if we give, since it's the, well, I, I don't know. I was about to just say the, the chair should have the authority to say, okay, if Brian. Are you available next week to meet? Yeah. You're gone the last week. I'm, right? I'm gone. Well, I can. Well, I, can I guess we're talking next week. Then. My last week before. I I could. School starts. I could I could find time, with the exception of a couple of days because I'm traveling, okay. for work. So. But why don't you knock your socks off and see what happens? Okay. See so what happens and let us know if we're keeping in the loop and. Uh, we we can expedite this process. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Okay. State primary warrant. Signatures required. Ten Just required. trust us if you can't read it. That's all right. Fred, can I buy it?
And the other one while you're signing is the FERCOG Planning Board Rep Appointment. Select Board appoints a representative, and I would suggest that representative would be myself. And we agree with you. Right, can I ask a question? Yep. Judy, don't leave here. Shoot. Having been the representative and done a very poor job at it, um, most of the people who are there are from the respective town planning boards. Yep. Does it, and because you've got a lot on your plate. Yes. <laughs> and another night meeting is just what you're begging for, I'm sure. Does it make sure, does it make sense for a member of the planning board? That's to be a great idea. I think it there does. There already is a planning board rep. Oh, there yes, is? There's, there's a rep for the planning board and a rep for the select So I'm confused. Who's, two who's, who's for the planning, planning, planning board? rep, I don't get it. Who's the planning board rep? Don. Well, Don Sue. So why are we? Don is, oh. you know, it, it occurs to me, um, we have a new members of the planning board since we last discussed this. Um, the way the planning board left it, Don, Don is formally the rep, but he is to let us know, the rest of the committee know if there's something that, that the board would be planning board would be especially interested in and mm -hmm. one of us will go and as a general rule nobody goes but I think we have a new member who might be interested in being more active planning board member so, okay. so and you have a separate appointment letter in your box so for the planning board members. okay so I think we can so I'm I, getting I would suggest that, that you ask the planning board to revisit when they get this letter to, to actually revisit their, their it's, in, it's in the box for your next meeting. So you should have it. So are there two seats we're talking about? Yes. Why? I'm confused. Why are we having two? Each municipality has two representatives to the FRPB. One is a select board member or their designee and one is a planning board member. Oh. Well, we ought to designate. Because we don't have enough bureaucracy already. Let's designate well, it. Correct. We can't find All right, Brian. Here. There's some issues like transit and things that are kind of beyond the. Well, it's a board separate board. It's a separate board. I think I'm on the transit one, aren't I? No, I'm well, not. The, the, the I'm on. Well, I'm on. You're on one, two, and I'm on one. Well, I'm. Uh, Fine. I, I, I'm, 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 built, but I don't I'm shocked that we need two members from, from Waitley to be on the FERCOG planning board, but if that's what they asked for, then Brian, you got your wish. I'm so excited. Okay. And then you guys will revisit who from the planning board. And, and when I see I Linda, I'll say, why on board. earth do you need two people on the planning board, on the committee? Yeah, okay. Okay. Great. Is that it? Yes. Well, what are we signing? You said there were two things to sign. Oh, no, one thing. Just one thing? Oh, oh I mean, I'm sorry. I didn't. State primary one. <clears throat> Permission to leave. Yes. You and I believe we're all done. Here. Yes. Uh, okay. Time of the next meeting. I'm in the, oh, right. So I start teaching in Keene on the 30th, it just so happens, which is the, our meeting at 7. I get done teaching at 6. I didn't get arrested for speeding. So I was uh, asking if we could have the meeting at 7.30. Give me a little time to grab a sandwich on the way down or something. If that's all right with people, actually, it'd just be me and Fred, right? Because Jonathan yes. wants to. I'm going to be. I, I you want to 7:30 start? I'm going forward and say that teaching, or I'm fine with that. Uh, 7:30 per permanently. Permanently, permanently, yeah. So, are you okay permanently? 7:30. I'm I'm okay permanently. I I, I feel badly for for you guys, but it's only a half hour. <clears throat> yeah, are there are other days that you don't work till six. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. We could have the meeting Monday, Wednesday, or Friday. We could have it at six, at five, at seven, whatever. Uh, I, Mondays I would, are usually open around here. I, I would suggest changing a date because you know I have assessors meetings Tuesdays, but we work around the schedule, so some days I can't. I have conflicts, so it could work out better for me. But if we went to Monday, say. 
Uh, the, my only challenge with Monday is as long as we, as long as either Brian or Mary Ellen could cross-reference school committee meeting nights. Okay. So that I don't have. Oh, if you did, they usually do. I think the first. I, as long as it is, but with a new superintendent, who knows whether that's staying the same. I would just like I would just prefer not to meet the same night as the school committee. They have set days that they meet. I think I believe so. They they have a, a set a set time, and okay. I, it just it, it, it's 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 it's, it's childcare issues. If you stick to the second and last Monday, then I think you'll be okay. Is that going to be okay? And yeah, as of now, anyway, would be. That's fine by me. And what about the meeting time? Don't Six Six thirty. Seven. Nah, seven. If we go to Mondays. Yeah, uh, six. I I would do six. I wouldn't do anything earlier than six thirty. All right. In the I, fall. I don't care. It may be harder to get people to the meeting. Uh, six thirty seems safer. safer. All right, and you guys get out. Are you okay with that? Home right? earlier. It's starting when now for the September one. So we got to change September twelfth to thirteenth to the Monday. Well, I'll give you new dates. Yeah. So so the next meeting is going to be the 29th at six thirty. Okay, so would be. Which I might might be able to make actually. All right, good. Okay, so Don't quote me on that. I'm not writing it down. So we want to change the next If I show, I show. Yeah, from the 30th to the 29th, 6.30. And then going forward, yeah. Monday's at 6.30. The second and last Monday, you stick with that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Like the second and last yeah. Tuesday, we'll do second and last Monday. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Can change that. Does the website list those? Oh, we have to change the website. Okay. There being no further business, I adjourn the meeting. Okay.